I've demonstrated the letterpress technique using both white and ivory cardstock and soft neutral ink. But today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how mixing bright colored cardstock and unexpected ink colors brings a beautiful Baroque look to your letterpress background. Let me show you the tools and products you need to do this technique. First, you're going to need a cuddle bug folder, and I'm using the Victoria folder. Then you're going to need some cardstock, and this is a piece of our new cherry red cardstock. You're also going to need some ink, and I'm using some of the Memento gray flannel ink. Now, you might not expect that gray ink on our cherry red background would look good together, but wait until you see the results. And then I'm going to show you a little tip on using a stamp that's bigger than a, a cut file. So I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so to begin, you've, you first have to decide which side of the cuddle bug folder you want to use. Do you want the impressed image to have the color on it, or do you want the raised image to have the color on it? Well, I kind of like the way it looks when the raised image is the actual cardstock, and then the impression that's made with the cuddle bug folder has the darker tone. So on this particular folder, I would be inking up the front of the folder because that is the part that will make the impression for the background. And I'm going to do this with this gray flannel ink, and I'm going to just rub this ink pad down the cuddle bug folder. Now this will not ruin your cuddle bug folders at all. They rinse very nicely with some water, and then you can dry them with a paper towel. However, with certain colors like red, you may want to rinse them right away. Don't give it too much time to dry, or there might be some light staining. Okay, now I'm going to grab my cuddle bug and set that up and get that ready to use. Now, my next step is to place this piece of cherry red cardstock onto the cuddle bug folder and carefully lay the top down. Now I'm going to start with an A plate and a B plate. Here's my white A plate and my B plate, and then my cuddle bug folder will go down next, and then a B plate on top. And I'm going to create my letterpress background by running that through the machine. So take a look at how beautiful that looks together. One thing you'll find with any ink pads but especially the Memento, because those are the ones I work with the most, you will notice that once the ink color is completely dry, it will dry up a shade lighter. So if you really want to make sure that this is going to work with your project, you may want to try it and just let it dry for a few minutes to see the actual color you're going to get. Now I'm going to take this particular panel, and I'm going to mount it on top of a piece of ivory. And that is really going to make that whole background pop out even more. See how nicely the ivory looks with the cherry red. That is a pretty background. And then this whole panel will go on top of a cherry red card base that I cut earlier. And that will go right there like that. Isn't that lovely? Okay, so I want to show you something else. This is a cut file that I did on the Silhouette. I purchased this particular design for 99 cents in the Silhouette store. And I want to stamp this particular floral image on top, but you can see that the floral image extends way below the inside area that I want to stamp into. And I don't want that image to extend past the cut file cut, and I don't want to make this particular design bigger because this fits so nicely right in the center of my card. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, st the stamp laying on its back and I'm going to take some rhubarb stock ink. This is the Memento rhubar rhubarb stock. Matches our cherry red really nicely. And I'm going to ink up the top part of that stamp, and then I'm going to come down just to where that line is on the acrylic block. So I'm not going to go 
past that line. You can see I left some of that design uninked. Now I'm just going to lay it there and make like just place it over there and see that it's not too it doesn't extend too far below the cut file and it does not so I'm going to stamp it right there and now I have my beautiful image that fit nicely inside this cut and this will go on top of my card. Let me show you my finished card project because I jazzed it up a little bit with some of the copper brads. Now this particular stamp image and the greeting is from the new Sunkissed Autumn Stamp TV kit. And the cherry red cardstock and ivory cardstock are, are also in the kit as well as these copper brads. And the only thing that I used that wasn't in the kit was a few pop dots to raise this particular image off to give it a little bit more depth but you can tape it right down onto the card and it'll look just as nice. Try this technique with tan, green, or blue cardstock to create a more masculine look or try using pastel cardstock such as lemon yellow, soft pink, or light peach for a more feminine backdrop.